for now on, help me remember to keep that recording so students can watch it later. Um, doing as little as turning in your code with your, your name on it or just doing one or two things that is asked of you will not be accepted and will not be dropped. And another lab will be dropped. Academic dishonesty of any kind will not be tolerated. A lab grade that is flagged as academic dishonesty will be given as a zero, will be calculated in with the other grades, and will and will be dropped. Any lab below 50 will not be dropped, and another grade will be dropped in its place. Lab six, if you do not demonstrate what you have done, completed or not, will not be dropped. It's a double-edged sword. If you try to do the lab and you let's say you got stuck, turn in what you have. If it's above a 50, I will. It could be considered one of the drops for the for your six labs. If you do not do it, I do not drop it. You will get a zero, or if you get anything lower than a 50, that grade is kept. And if all the other grades are A's, one of those A's is going. So you tell me which lab grade you want me to drop. Any questions on that? You have six labs. If you attempted and one of them didn't turn out too well, I will drop that one. But if you do not do it, I do not drop it. And especially if you caught cheating, do not uh, do not cheat. I will not drop it if it's anything marked as dis um, academic dishonesty. I have students who I have printed out the code and I can overlay the sheet of paper. And I ask them, how could these two be Explain to me why these not, should not be considered cheating when you can line them up line by line. I don't mind students helping each other out, but please do not turn in the same code. Any questions on that? No. Okay, good. Quizzes. Individual in-class time quizzes will be given through the semester. AK, that's a correction. They will be online. They will be timed, but they will be online. These quizzes consist of multiple choice questions, fill in the blank, short answer, true, false, and coding. No late quizzes will be accepted. Quizzes can be made up if you email prior to the class. Since they're no longer um, in the classroom courses, there are going to be a link on Blackboard, and I'll give you all the way up to midnight to sign up to take it on that day. Any questions on that? The lowest quiz will be dropped. OK. Exams, so two exams worth 15% each. All exam will consist of combination of the following short answers, fill in the blank, multiple choice, true, false, and coding questions. The final exam, exam will be required of all students. Uh, of course, all this will be online as well. Any other questions so far? You have labs, quizzes, and exams. Here's your rubric. Lab assignments are 35%, quizzes 35%, exams 30. Here is roughly the schedule of the course. We cover a chapter a week, roughly. Anything that changes in this will be posted on the announcement page, but I wanted to give you a high level view of when things are going to be due, when things are going to be assigned. Once I assign lab one, I will release all the labs to you. So that's another reason why I do not accept any late work because you will have access to all the labs up front once lab one is assigned. Any questions so far? No. Oh. The way we normally do um, classrooms is I've tried recording the lectures on the PowerPoint slides. It didn't work out too well. So we'll have live lectures. We'll go over the PowerPoint slides together. And if you have any questions, then we'll move on. But we have lecture. And then usually after that, we either have a review or we start going into labs. If you look at the blackboard, this is your probably view right here. 
Here's the announcement page. Anything that's different, I will post here, or any upcoming events, I'll post here. So please be active on the announcements looking at it. Here's your syllabus if you need to download it right here. Source code from book. This was actually from version 9, but there's little change with the coding wise with version 8. You can download it and import it into your C compiler and practice with it. You do not have to retype it manually. You can just copy and paste it in. Oh, this. Seed Labs, we're going to cover over more. That should be blocked right now, but what we do is after a certain lab, that Seed Labs, what we would do is actually um, enhance one the lab. We would start with like a Seed Lab and then we enhance it over and over again, adding a new complex topic each time, such as functions, arrays, looping. This is Blackboard Collaborate. This is where, that's how you got here, seeing um, how you get into live lectures. If you need to share your computer or if you need help with your labs and it doesn't work well going email back and forth with the source code, what we could do is I can create a session like you joined right now and you can share me your screen. So that way I can help because sometimes email and back and forth, we get lost in the email set. So we can create a session and, and if you need help, here's where I can help you. Person review, person, person rebel. This is where if you need to get your access code. Here it is if you're going to do the book. How to access live lectures. This is a document that I put together that some of you probably followed how to join um, live lectures and how you can download the lectures as well. This is the virtual and uh, this one is TCC virtual. I think I put it right here too. This is a document that shows you how to set up your cloud and how you access the Microsoft Visual Studio. And I'll demonstrate that right now in a few in a few minutes. This other one right here is how you open up Visual Studio and start running your code. We will be doing this multiple times in the class when you do our labs. Every time we finish a chapter, the next day we'll do a review and an in-lab to reinforce everything that we talked about. Any questions so far? No? And everyone can still see my screen, correct? Yep. If you have a Mac and yes. you don't, okay, thank you. If you have a Mac, you can use Xcode to compile your code. I attached on Blackboard, I think a YouTube video that explains how you could do Xcode, C++ using Xcode. Here's a reference for C++, that is very good. Is it an issue if you use an online compiler like Repellet? Yes, you can do that, and that's another one I was going to hear. Here's an online G, um, G++ compiler right here that you can use as well. But you can do this at home using an online compiler, and what I would recommend is then, once you have that saved off, um, go to the virtual iCloud one and just run it there just to make sure it works, if that makes sense. Run it here on your local because it's quick and it's you don't have the lag of going to the iCloud with the school but just make sure it runs on that one, one when you finish because that way you know it works and then that's where I'm going to grade it if it makes sense. To get on TCC iCloud let me sign on. It's just for me you know right. And do not worry, we'll go over this over and over again, so you should be able to. That's where
it's going to open up a virtual desktop for you. And from here, you can find Microsoft Visual Studio. Visual Studio. We will be doing this later on next week once you start hitting chapters one and two. Here's also, uh, do you have academic extras? Here is the lecture slides. These are actually from version nine, but they match closely with uh, version eight, and I don't have the lecture slides for version eight anymore. Any questions so far of how this class is going to be handled? Yeah, just to be certain, so we're going to save our source file on the virtual machine's OneDrive. Is that correct? Even if we do it on our <laughs> wherever, wherever you're going to save it, you, that's your opportunity. I would not. I would also. If you do on the virtual machine, I would save it off to your local machines or email it to yourself because on the virtual machine itself, machines that if you, that you log off, I think it gets reset. The source code, keep it. But when you submit your source code to me, it's going to be via Blackboard. Okay. So, yeah, that's what I meant, not save. I meant submit. So we're not going to submit it through the OneDrive on the virtual machine. We're going to submit it no. through Blackboard. Yes. Once okay. you have access to, let's say, let me open this up. Labs. You're going to see a link called Labs after Labs Ones, and you're going to go inside here, and you're going to see all your options into Labs. Once you get this submitted, you're going to click on this, and it's going to give you an option to upload a file, if that makes sense. So once you get in the Labs, it's going to click on the Lab, and you're going to submit it. Make sure, and we'll do this a couple times before you actually do it, that when you upload your file to be graded, you have two attempts. And while, while they're in the classroom, I can validate to make sure I receive it. Do not click on Save as Draft. Save as Draft will only show on my side as it's in progress. And you'll see that when, the, when that link opens up, because when it says in progress, that's not attempted because I don't have access to it. Any other questions? Right here, this is the cor courses that the schedule that we're going to do for Wednesday. We're going to go over chapter one and we're going to practice starting up Visual Studio. And we're going to use that using the iCloud. And then after this, we review chapter one and start chapter two. Only chapters one and chapter two together will include in your first quiz. But other than that, you have a quiz after every chapter to make sure you understand all the topics in that chapter. So I'm not seeing the labs on the uh, black. The labs are not open yet. The labs oh, are not open. Gotcha. The labs will be, I haven't confirmed like all what I'm going to use for your labs, but as they're open, you'll see them here. Same thing when quizzes come up due, exams come due, there's going to be I can show you. There's going to be a, um, they're not visible. I think it says quizzes like right here, or online quizzes that you can click, it'll click on and it will show you the quizzes that you need to take. So as things come up, I will start releasing some of these things so you can view them. So when you go to, um, I'll open up the labs right here on Wednesday, September 9th. That's when your first lab one gets assigned, and I will release all the labs to you, one through six. As we go through this course, make sure you think of ideas what you want for your final project. Your lab six is going to be your own creation. I'm going to give you requirements, let's say, doing functions, looping, file processing structures, and you incorporate them in however way you want, but you're going to demonstrate that in front of the classroom, well, virtually, and demonstrate your code for the class. So as we go through it, think of ideas of what you would want to do.
but as we go through this course, it's we do one chapter a week with a lab, in lab um, to we do an in lab in class to make sure you understand the concepts of that chapter. The in labs that we do are not graded. It's just for you to get practice with it. Normally in the classroom, I would have students come up and code at the instructor stations to make sure they understand it. But since this is virtual, we'll do it together. Any other questions or concerns? So would that be like a presentation format for you in, in the class? Or is it just like you submit it to you? The in-labs or the labs? In labs, in labs. In labs, what we'll do is the same way as we're just doing right now. I'll share a virtual Visual Studio, and we'll talk out loud. The problem that we're going to address, create like a flow chart and how we're going to code it. But we're going to be coding it together, if that makes sense. You will not submit that code. That is just for you to get practice with how to open a Visual Studio, how to create a project, and start understanding how to compile the code and practice with the concepts in that chapter. It's not used for grading, it's just used to set as an example because some of those things that we do in lab, you are going to use in your labs itself that you're going to turn in for a grade. Does that answer your question? Yes. If When you do your individual labs and you get stuck, please email me your code, your source code, and the error message. Print screen, preferably, because sometimes I can actually see the error message, and then I will assist you that way. If we get multiple emails and we're still getting stuck, what we could do is we can create a session like we just joined right now, and you can share your screen. And then you can show me the problem and we can look at your code together. You're not alone if you get stuck. I will be here to assist you. That's why I'm still trying to do this live class instead of having everything recorded and you watch. This is why if you need help, I can even make you as a moderator and you can share your screen and I can help you. Any other questions or concerns? Was that? I didn't get out. Let me see. One of the question: When you install Visual Studio, which one do you need to select on the install? You pick Community. I'm not sure what's out there. Uh, the one on iCloud right now is Visual Studio 2019. Let me type it: Visual Studio 2019. I don't know what's in the Community. I don't use. Um, Visual Studio in the real world. The main languages I use is Java, and I use that with IntelliJ. I know JavaScript, a little bit of, um, I know a little bit about JavaScript, Python, and C++. If you want to know my background, I've been working in the pharmaceutical software company programming, American Airlines programming, and now I just do like contract work. So I've been all over the place. Any questions or concerns? You can use this online browser if you want to use it for a quick practice, or you can download it. Um, Visual Studio, those Borlands, those G++, those multiple compilers that you can use. Any other questions or concerns about this course? All right, so um, I just want to make sure. So I'm going. So say I do my project on my Visual Studio, like on my computer, and then when I, when I try to, ch when I see when I compile it on for the school one, then I go to um, the doc, the document you sent. You should have attached about the project setup. Uh huh. Oh, so. So then, if it runs, if it compiles, it runs on the uh, on that the information technology pop up. Then we can submit it. You can yes, if it runs on Visual Studio on the cloud version, whatever. Then yes, I you would be able to submit it. 
So you don't have to have it on the iCloud one, but I'm just saying just recommend it to test it to make sure everything works because that's where I am going to run your code. Okay, I see. Last semester, I was running it when it went to virtual. I was running on um, Xcode, and sometimes there are some differences with Xcodes that I had to change, especially when it comes with the um, directory structures. And so that was more chaotic for me. And so um, Shares said, hey, you know, there's an iCloud version for students and instructors to use. That way, students do not have to worry about installing and so forth on their own computers, but they can use the iCloud version. Because a lot of students sometimes didn't have access to laptops or computers at home, so they're using schools, and now they are having chaotic times trying to install it, so now they don't have to worry about the installation process. They can just use the cloud that's given to you. Any other questions? No. Does everyone, did everyone get access? Or are they going to use the ebook or did they purchase the actual hard copy book? I was able to get access to the ebook. I, I haven't done it yet, but I'm definitely going to do the ebook. E e the, the ebook, FYI, is only good for the end of the semester. Where is the um the ebook? If there's a link for it. If you go to Blackboard. I'm not sure what has. If you go to the Pearson Rebel, there's right here access code right here. You can click right here, but if you need to get the access code, the access code is right here. TCC. Um, hold up. Oh, I think I see it. The quizzes online on the Pearson Rebel book, you can take for practice, but they're not for grade. I don't know if they actually give you the review questions at the back of the book like they did with um, the hard copy. So I don't see it. But So none of the assignments on the Pearson book are for grade? No. You can, use them, you can go into them for practice, but they're not for grade. Okay. They have a good practice exercise for you, but they're not for grade. The only thing that's for graded are your labs that you get assigned, your quizzes, and your exams. Any other questions, concerns? And please help me when you do the online lectures that every time we sign on for me to hit the record button. I don't want, because they should be able for download for students who missed the class and so forth. I always keep forgetting to hit record. If everyone's fine, that is all for um, today. But just remember, we start chapter one on Monday, I mean Wednesday, it's pretty quick. But do not get behind on any of these chapters because they build upon one another. So if you get stuck, ask the questions sooner rather than later. But we'll start with chapter one on Wednesday. That will be quick. And then we'll start going with chapter two. But this is the flow of the course. If you're good. Have a great evening. I will see you on the Wednesday, same time, 6.30. The course class is normally from, was in classroom from 6.30 to actually 8.50. That's what it was normally for because we do lecture and lab. But to help it out, I do lecture all one day, and the next day we do lab and review to help break apart the class. But if you need help, I'll stay online until everyone goes. But I will see you on Wednesday. Have a good night. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. All right, we're good. Oh my God. Okay.